Hi there, happy Friday. So, um, Extinction Rebellion, you maybe you think they're amazing, maybe you don't like them, but I, I believe that the problem of climate change is something that we are all gonna have to tackle and whether you want to do it in some way that is along the lines of Extinction Rebellion or whether you want to do it in another way, um, we all need to take responsibility for this. Um, so, let me know if you agree or not down below. I would be fascinated to hear what you have to say. But today, um, I'm going to share with you a couple of tips, some lifestyle changes that you can make and some um, eco home upgrades that you can make. So two uh, simple sort of um, tips that you can do that um, will help you to do your little bit to help prevent this climate change catastrophe that could be about to happen or maybe already has we might be too late but all we can do is try so who am i well i'm an eco home architect i help homeowners to love their home and to protect the planet and um, i've been doing this for over 10 years and i'm the founding director of i architect so to start off with let's kick off with the lifestyle tips so um well, actually, let me just step back a second and just let you say, let me tell you that on over this weekend just gone past, the Extinction Rebellion group blockaded um, Deansgate in Manchester city centre and turned that into a pedestrian area. Um, I went along on Monday. It was quite quiet on Monday. I went there with my with family and um, I picked up one leaflet because I thought, well, it would be interesting to know what sort of information they're putting out there. And they, um, they, this is the leaf that I picked up, which you, it's back to front for you, but it says, take action on climate change. Humans are causing climate change. And here are six actions on climate change that can make a big difference. And the first one is use less electricity or gas for home heating. And the reason for this is that hot water and heating is the biggest share of energy use in UK homes, and it's about 80%. Um, so there are different things that you can do to reduce your use of um, energy for heating your home. Some of these are lifestyle changes, and some of these are things that you can do physically to your home itself, so that you can um, have a, a more energy efficient building, so it doesn't need as much heat put into it to stay warm. So um, why is this going to help you? Well, first of all, it is going to make your make things more comfortable for you. You're going to feel warmer when you want to feel warmer and more comfortable and you're going to be able to enjoy your time at home. You, it, you can't really relax if you're shivering um, and feeling cold. And secondly, it, it can really reduce your gas and electricity bills so that you're not spending as much on heating your home. So, I mean, not everybody is cost sensitive, but I found that for many people, even people who are in, in a good financial situation, it's not nice to be sat at home and, and to not feel comfortable and to be spending a lot of money on heating your home. You could use that money to do something much more fun, like go out for a meal or something. Um, so, you know, these are some simple things that you can do, simple lifestyle changes and some simple things that you can do to your home. And the first, so the lifestyle change tip that I'm going to give you is to invest in a jumper that you love. Because the first thing you should do when you're feeling a little bit cold at home is to put something warmer on think of it as as kind of you're like insulating your body now i i bought this um cardigan recently it's 100 percent cashmere cardigan it's in my favorite color turquoise i love this a cardigan it's beautiful it's soft it's thin and light but it's really warm um and because it's 100 percent wool i can wash it it's not going to release microplastics into the ocean and clog up the insides of fish and you know mussels and prawns and things like that so it's better for the environment having being wool and i also bought it 
in a charity shop so it's second hand pre-loved it's in extremely good condition and there's no bobbling whatsoever so i think it's it's possibly never or very very little worn previously and so you know for anybody who is vegan or concerned about animal welfare and doesn't really want to buy um sheep's wool then perhaps you feel more comfortable getting it when it's second hand so you're not um increasing the production of it that's not a personal concern of mine but i know um it is for many vegans um but it's much better to go with are we back are we back are we back <laughs> um video was paused because of poor connection okay so a lovely wool jumper that you love that is, uh, you know, my best lifestyle tip, really. And it's, it's one I'm sure you've heard, you've heard yourself, you know, put a jumper on before you turn the heating on. Another thing you can do is where you would tend to sit, maybe in the, on the sofa, have a couple of blankets to hand so that you can just put those over you and give you a bit of extra warmth there as well. And then a third thing that you can do, which is a little bit to do with the architecture of the house and a little bit to do with lifestyle is just reduce the actual temperature of your heating so instead of having it um you know so the temp temperature sort of typically is about 21 degrees that is a temperature range uh, around the temperature mark where most people feel comfortable however a lot of people will find that if you drop the heating temperature down a little bit, maybe 20, maybe 19, maybe 18 degrees, you're going to reduce the amount of energy you use for heating and you won't necessarily feel any discomfort. And especially if you put your jumper on as well and then you're heating, then you can certainly maybe perhaps even bring it down to 16 degrees so it's comfortable for you. It's warm enough, you're comfortable, but it's not overheating. It's not giving you, it's not putting in more heat energy than you really need. I mean, wandering around in shorts and t-shirt in the middle of the winter in your home. I know that a lot of people do like to do that, but it's not really, um, it's not really an advisable thing to do. And certainly that's a lifestyle um, choice to wear shorts and t-shirt in the middle of the winter and it's not a very um, climate friendly choice so that would be where you know change your lifestyle and wear more clothes you'll feel more comfortable and you won't need as much heating on and you'll be better doing better for the environment by doing that so that's that's the lifestyle side the second thing that i'm going to talk with you about is an eco home upgrade so what you could do to upgrade your home now this is the simplest thing to do which is why i know that a lot of homes have already had some of this work done already and there was certainly a lot of people have been doing this in the past say over the past 10 years lots of companies actually lots of um lots of energy supply companies have ha, have been tasked with doing this for free for people in their homes and that is insulating your loft space now it, it, this only works where you have a ceiling and you have a loft space and you put insulation immediately on top of the ceiling of the first floor or the you know your top floor it doesn't work where you have a room within the ceiling so you can see the sloping roof um, of of you know as as the ceiling of the room it doesn't really work for that so that's we're not talking about that scenario that's a little bit more complicated but where you have a loft and a ceiling and you've got insulation on top of that ceiling what i would suggest to you is go and see what insulation you have and how thick is it because Although it's been over the last 10 years, a lot of people have had insulation installed. The, um, the amount that used to be installed was about to, well, at one time it was 100 mil, then it went to 200 mil. And now it's more about more around 300 mil is what you would need to approximately, depends on the insulation type, but it's around about 300 mil of something like a rock wool or a mineral wool 
insulation sort of quilt product um, to meet current building regulations. And then if you add, say, a little bit more, say 350 or 400 mil, that starts to bring you more into around the passive house sort of area thickness of insulation. And so the more insulation you have in layers up there, the it's a bit like putting on an extra cardigan and an extra coat. It's going to add to the insulation of your home. It's not worth going, say, like a meter of insulation. That's not really going to do you much benefit. But between 300 and 400 mil it is worth increasing the amount of insulation you have up to that amount. I know it's not always possible if you've got, you're using your loft, you've boarded it out and you're using it for storage. Um, that can limit your ability to do this. But this is what I advise if you're not doing that and it's a straightforward, you've got a ceiling and you've got some insulation on top. If you've only got 200 mil of insulation, add an extra layer or two on top of that. And the key thing is to roll it out perpendicular so at right angles to that's this right angles one goes this way the other goes that way so you're going the opposite way to the to the layer of insulation below because that minimizes the amount of air gaps between the insulation and um, the rolls of, of insulation or the widths of the roll of insulation um, and there's one key thing to watch out for and that is that as you get to the edge of the roof the insulation is not jammed in so that it's stopping any necessary ventilation across your roof space because if you stop to stop insulation sorry not insulation if you start to stop ventilation across your roof space this is where you don't have a breather membrane um, and the, you know the roof build up is a sort of an older roof if you've not replaced your sort of slate or your tiles recently um and i don't know it depends on what you have underneath your slate or tiles but in general for an older property you want to make sure that you still have ventilation going across over the top of your insulation in that roof space so you don't want to push your insulation too far into the edge of the roof where it will block up the flow of ventilation because if you block up that ventilation um, you can get moisture and condensation building up on the timber of your roof and that can cause poor connection today I don't know why so that was it lifestyle tip put on a jumper find yourself a jumper that you really love secondly um, increase the insulation in your loft space. Those are the two easiest things you can do to help reduce the amount of energy you use at home for heating. Um, if you've got any um, comments about what you do to reduce your energy use at home, please put them in the um, comments below. If you have a different kind of roof, it's more complicated and you have some questions about that, please comment below with any questions you have about roof insulation. Okay, and I'll speak to you next week. Bye for now. finish it.